वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल दिस इज ट्रेंडी स्टॉम एंड यू आर वाचिंग थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट इफ नरुडो बिकेम जीबी इफ यू एंजॉय दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल नाउ वेस्टिंग नो टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट द स्टोरी नरुडो लिम्प्ड आउट ऑफ द इनाजुका विलेज एंड वेंट बैक होम टू गेट रेडी फॉर हिज ट्रिप टू कैमिनारी नो कुनी नरुडो थॉट इट वुड बी अ गुड आइडिया टू टॉक टू द रेकेज अबाउट गेटिंग हिम टू हेल्प विद द इनवेजन आफ्टर द मीटिंग विद हिरोजन डेंजो एंड जुराया He knew from his time in Kaminari Nikuni that they didn't have enough wood for fires in the winter, so many people in the village had to deal with the cold. If he and the Rakage could agree on a price, he was sure. He also had a backup plan because he was a primordial god. The third Hokage had already agreed to Naruto's plan and named him as the official way for the villagers to talk things out. Nahori and Sayuri had already left to train with Jiraiya or Kazumi, so he didn't have to say goodbye to them. After getting what he needed, he waited for Genma and Yamato, who were going to be his temporary teammates. They were told to go to the Land of Lightning and find a group of Kumo Janin. These Janin would then take them to the village. "Hey there, Namikaze." "Sama." Genma said as he walked slowly toward the blonde. His brown hair was shoulder length and hung around his face. He also had brown eyes. His forehead protector was on top of his head like a bandana. He was dressed like a janin and had his signature senbon in his mouth. Genma. San, please just call me Naruto. The blonde girl said with a laugh. The blonde was dressed in a long, sleeved white haori with 10 tails that split at the waist. He wore black pants and a long, sleeved shirt that looked like they were from Anbu. Yamato isn't able to come with us. He was requested by Jiraiya. Dono to help with Narumi's training. This is what Genma told the Biju, who nodded. That's all right. This will be an easy mission anyways. The next day in Kaminari no Kuni. Naruto and Genma had been traveling for days before they finally got to the mountain village. The group of Kumo Janin met them at the country's border. Naruto and Genma were now on their way to talk to the village's leader. Naruto had to agree that the village was pretty nice when there wasn't a battle going on. When they got to the village's biggest building, one of the Janin said, "We're here." Naruto gave a nod and went into the metal building. "Excuse me, do you have an appointment with Rakage?" "Sama?" The front desk worker asked the two shinobi. "Sure. We're here for the talks between the lead and the cloud." "My name is Naruto Namakaze and I'm here to speak for the Hokage." He spoke in a calm voice. During these kinds of talks, he had to keep his cool and not give the other side an advantage. The woman pulled out a card and said, "Here you are." He'll be with you in a second. She was done and went to tell the Rakage that the Konoha negotiators had arrived. After some time, Naruto and Genma heard a loud crash. When the receptionist came back down, she was sweating like crazy. The Rakage will now see you. Naruto and Genma went to the place the woman told them the office was and saw a big hole next to the door. Are you two just going to stand there all day? He asked them through the hole. He said before he began to curl, "Come in." You can use the hole if you want. He was a big, dark, skinned man with huge muscles. With a small mustache and beard and clear cheekbones, he had combed back almost all of his blonde hair. After putting on his rakage haori, he showed off his chest. So you two want to talk things over with me, huh? So tell me what you're offering. A said as he kept curling the weight. Naruto agreed and called up a scroll, saying, "This scroll has the terms of the deal." To thank Kumo for his help when Orochimaru attacked my village, Konoha will give Kumo a lot of firewood and other plants and fruits that grow in the fire country. Your village will also get a lot of money as a reward. Naruto talked about the deal's terms. He looked over the scroll and made sure there weren't any hidden rules that could hurt his village. He thought there weren't any, but he had Mabui check just to be sure. There are no hidden parts of the deal. What they said was true. Mabui let her leader know. I gave Naruto a slow nod and then we will accept these terms but something else has brought my attention. I said as he took a scroll out of his robe. A few days ago, one of my best shinobi, Killer B, informed me that you are special. He told Naruto this as he gave him the scroll. Naruto said with a more serious tone in his eyes, "Genma. San, please go wait back at the entrance to the tower." Naruto had become more serious and his voice was no longer as warm as it used to be. The shinobi with the bandana nodded and left the room. Naku looked at Mabui and asked, "Does she know?" 
The rakage agreed, yes, I trust her completely. She is my wife after all. A said with a grin as she hit Mabui in the behind. The blonde turned bright red, hit A over the head, and then stormed out of the room. Nice catch huh? The asked with a small laugh. I'd say so, I recently took the hand of the Inazuka clan head Sume and her two daughters Hana and Inuko at the same time. Naruto said with a mug on his face. Good job kid. A said as he gave a wise nod. The A in this world was much better than the one in his. While this A was still serious, he knew how to be a guy, unlike the A from where he came from, who was very shy. But back to business, while the fact that you're either the new Jubi or Rakuto Senen does worry me, I have thought of a way to benefit both of us and your village. He said this as he pulled out a scroll. What's this? He said this as he opened the scroll. This is an agreement between our towns. There will be lower tariffs and taxes on trade between villages. Shinobi from both villages will be able to work together on missions, and if one of our villages gets into a war, the other will help it. I laid out the treaty's rules. To make the deal even stronger, Kumo will also give you Samui, Karui, and Yugito Ni as wives. These are signs of how much I trust you, since I love all three of you like daughters. Do you agree? Do they know about this? Naruto asked because he didn't want to force anyone to marry him. And nodded and said, yes, they were told and agreed. They will go to your village and stay there as permanent Kumo Shinobi. They will also marry you. Do you agree to the terms? Many people were surprised when Naruto was able to match the big man's strength. He just nodded and shook his hand. It's been nice doing business with you eh? Dono. He said this with a deep bow and took the two scrolls that I had signed for him. I let out a loud chuckle, you might as well start calling me eh? Tucson since you'll be married to my three adoptive daughters soon. Naruto smiled and then walked back to the waiting room to find Genma. Ready? Elisa asked. Yeah. Let's just use Hiraishin to go back. He said this as he grabbed Genma's shoulders and then disappeared in an instant. The big man went back to his office and looked out his window at the village. Naruto. San, I hope you can keep them safe. Yugioto in particular because of what's to come. He had a thought before he went back to his work. The winners of the preliminary exams were all in one place at the Chunin exam stadium. It was a loud crowd of tens of thousands of shinobi, civilians, and diplomats from all over the continent from the Kumo, Konoha, and Suna groups. The Rakage, the Hokage, and Orochimaru dressed as the case cage sat in the highest stand in the arena. Naruto was standing in the field with the other people. Many people in the arena were complaining that Minato Namikaze being in the exams was unfair, so he had to fight the urge to kill them all himself. Dad, I'm not your father. I must be crazy, Naruto thought to himself. Shinobi with a bandana on his head said, My name is Genma Shiranui. The original Proctor Hayate had an unfortunate accident during a mission. He then put a senbon in his mouth. Naruto was still mad that he couldn't get back to the village in time to save Hayate. He couldn't remember what had happened because it had been so long ago in his world. How could I remember to do that? He felt bad about himself and told himself, I should have fixed this before I left. I'm sorry, Nako. Chan. When he was younger, Nako always looked out for him in his world, but he let her down when he could have saved the person she loved. The first match will now begin. Everyone other than Samui form Kumo and Hanada Hayuga of Konoha please go to the participants section of the stands. Genma said that. Except for Samui and Hanada, everyone got up from their seats. Naruto sat down next to Narumi and Sayuri. Sayuri asked her lover, so do you think Hanada? San will win? The lover just shrugged. I don't really know. From what I can gather they both have very similar bodies build for speed, but Samui's body has more muscle than Hanada but will be slower. In terms of chakra and ability, Samui has more chakra by a small margin than Hanada and has better sword skills, Hanada on the other hand has her Byakugan and her Jiyukan. However I say that Samui will win if exactly who her father is has had an effect on her training. Naruto finished as the match began. She yelled, battle cry, and charged at her opponent. It was already on when she went to hit Samui in the heart, but the blonde beauty easily avoided the blow. I won't lose. I'll get my Narumi. While she kept yelling at the Kumo Kunoichi, she told herself this. Samui was just barely able to avoid all of the Hayuga's attacks. 
The cold Kunoichi thought to herself, she's fast, as she avoided another strike that looked like it would be a fetal strike. Samui looked at the Hyuga and said, this is not cool. She then jumped away from it. The Hanada gave her a mean look and charged again. I can't beat her with my bare hands, but I have my sword, she thought as she pulled it out. She swung it in the air, charged it with lightning chakra, and sent a wave of electricity at the Hyuga heiress. The Kayuga smiled as she dodged the attack with style and charged at the blonde. As Hinata began a dangerous dance with the Kumo Kunoichi, she told herself, I will beat this Kumo bitch then I'll beat the worthless wannabe Yandaimi Naruto and get my love back. They almost perfectly avoided each other. When Samui tried to cut Hinata in the middle, the girl with the lavender eyes jumped over the attack and kicked him in the face. The blonde with lots of breasts was kicked and fell backwards, but she got back up before she hit the wall. Samui yelled, lightning shuriken jutsu. As she threw several fiery shuriken at Hanada, who just smiled. Hanada yelled, Katen. And began to spin very quickly. When the shuriken hit the dome of chakra, it didn't hurt anything. The busty Hayuga stopped spinning and smirked at Samui, who didn't show any emotion. Let's see how you handle this. 8 trigrams, vacuum palm. She said as she pushed her palm forward and sent a strong shockwave at Samui. When the shock wave got close to the blonde, she made a series of hand signs that meant, Raiden, Thunder Push. Samui did the same thing Hanada did, but she sent a spinning cloud of lightning at Hanada instead. When the two moves hit each other, they made a huge explosion. Hanada had to turn away from Samui because of her Byakugan. This gave Samui time to get close to her, but this time her hands were covered in a cloak of lightning. Raiden no Yoroi. Rakage Chop. Samui said as she did a vertical chop. Even though Hanada was able to cross. Guard with her arms raised, she could still feel her bones cracking from the force of the attack. When Samui saw that Hanada's attack had been blocked, she jumped back away from the Hyuga before she could hit her. Hanada knew that the strong attack had hurt her arms, but she chose to keep fighting. She said in a low voice, I have to end this. No one could hear her. She thought to herself, at this rate, I won't be able to hit her with 64 or even 32 palms. It's time to try out my new move. Samui glared at the Hyuga and said, she stopped my attack. That's cool, but I need to finish this, the curvy girl said, giving the rakage a sideways glance. The rakage and the other cages were looking down at the battle. Enough with this. Gentle step twin lion fists. Hanada yelled as a curtain of chakra formed around both of her hands and looked like lion heads. I couldn't agree with you more, Samui said coldly as she charged up the lightning cloak around her hands. Raiden no Yoroi, Lightning Dragon's Claw. She said as her hands got bigger and bigger and looked like big claws. Before they charged, both busty women glared at each other. People in the crowd held their breath as the two genin got closer and closer until they finally hit each other. Around the middle, where the two had fought, a big cloud of smoke rose into the air. After the dust settled, everyone saw Samui and Hanada standing face to face with their fists on each other's jaws. No one spoke while the two stood there with their mouths open. Even though it was only seconds, it felt like hours to everyone before they fell on top of each other, giving some perverts, like the Hokage, a small nosebleed when they saw their huge chests pressing against each other. Hiruzen quickly wiped his nose before he saw the cages. Well that was a good battle. I believe both have shown that they have the power to become Chunin but I don't think that Hanada is quite ready yet. She was too straightforward and swayed by her anger. Hiruzen talked to the other cages. They agreed and said, that's true. She has a fiery side that I can respect. He did not say anything else about his adopted daughter. I agree with you Hokage. Dono. That was a great battle but I'm sure that the next one between my daughter and a living Namikaze will be even better with the one between the Uzumaki and Uchiha being the second best of the finals. Orochimaru, disguised as the case cage. Genma went to the middle of the ring after Hanada and Samui had been thrown out. Would Naruto Namikaze and Sabaku no Gaia please come down the fighting area? Naruto smiled as he jumped over the railing and landed softly. She let some sand out of her gourd and used it to make a platform. She then floated down to the other side, across from Naruto. In Gaia's head, Shukaku spoke in a crazy voice, Give me father's blood. This is your chance to make mother very happy. Gaia had to fight the urge to put her hand on her head while the biju inside her yelled orders at her. She didn't fight them. 
Instead, she just stood there and looked at Naruto with eyes filled with intense desire to kill. Gaia said, You, Naruto Namikaze, will be the one to prove that I exist. As more sand came out of her gourd and piled up around her, she was getting ready to attack and protect her during battle. He smiled and pulled out his sword. As Naruto took a stance, he thought to himself, it looks like I'll be able to fully test that jutsu. The judge began the fight, and Gaia's sand began to move right away. The sand followed Naruto even though he jumped out of the way of it. Naruto said in a whisper, Jinto. Shadowless flight, and then he disappeared. Galia's sand rose behind her just in time to block Naruto's punch, but the force of the attack blew away most of the sand. He smiled as he cut his sword, but more sand jumped up and blocked it. The blade did cut through the sand and leave a light scratch on Gaia's sand armor, so it almost blocked it. Gaia's eyes got really big when she saw that her ultimate defense couldn't even block the sword. It let the sword go right through it. Konkuro and Tamari were in the stands and were amazed when they saw the sword cut through the sand like it wasn't there. When the sand turned to attack Naruto, he didn't have time to keep fighting. As Naruto hit the sand, he flipped away from it. The sand kept going after Naruto, but the blonde biju was too fast for it. As Naruto charged at the redhead again, he thought, this is kind of fun. The sand swirled around Gaia and formed a huge shield in the shape of a sphere. His right hand turned into a sphere of swirling black and white chakra. Rasengan. He yelled as he hit the shell with his jutsu. There was sand all over the place as the spiraling ball of doom went through the sand and hit Gaia in the stomach. Gaia shot through the crowd and hit the wall. Her sand gourd blew up into a huge cushion that kept her from hitting the arena wall. The jutsu was so strong that it broke all of her sand armor. Gaia pushed herself off the wall and gave Naruto a mean look. For a split second, her eyes changed into Shukaku's. I asked Gaia in a smooth voice, give up, you can't win. Maybe we can go out to lunch after the tests are over. While Gaia blushed at the offer, Shukaku pulled her away from the idea of maybe taking it. Gaia didn't even say anything as her sand kept coming at Naruto, who had his sword out. When she saw the sand stop in its tracks, her eyes got really big. It made Gaia say, what the hell, when she saw her sand stop moving on its own. Naruto said this before charging at the Jinchuriki, Sabakukazi is a special sword I got from a friend a while ago. It is the sword of the desert winds and it gives me enough control over sand to stop your attacks. Gaia had to move because she knew that his sword could get through her defenses and stop some of her attacks. Gaia yelled, sand drizzle. And threw a big cloud of sand into the air. The sand then began to fall in big chunks. He smirked and swung his sword over his head to block any attack that would have hurt him. Because he didn't want to use the Rinnegan just yet, he would stick with the Sabakukazi until he thought it was time to use his secret move. That's not enough, Gaia. Chan. Desert Heat. Naruto yelled as he swung his sword at the hot redhead and sent a wave of wind that was very hot. Gaia's defenses went up to stop the attack, which was so hot that it turned some of them into glass. Naruto said as he stirred the air above him, this is getting fun, but let's see you block this. He saw a red sphere appear over him, and red winds spun around it. Gaia used her most powerful defense as Naruto jumped high into the air. Shikaku could feel the biju chakra in the attack, so he added more sand and his own chakra to Gara's wall. Naruto yelled, Dragon Twister. As he swung his sword and hit Gaia with the attack. His new attack, which he came up with during the month, was this one. It was a lot like the Rosenshurken but the wind around the biju chakra sphere was real wind instead of just wind nature chakra. The attack went straight through Gaia's shield and turned it into a huge dome of red wind with a purple glow in the middle. The attack could be felt all the way across the arena, and the strong winds even reached the cages in their booth. The wind and sand were so strong that everyone in the stands had to cover their eyes. A yelled at Serutobi, what power? He was there when Naruto practiced it on one of Kumo's lands. His plan was for Naruto and Genma to rest in Kumo for a few days before going back. He also let them use his training ground during that time. He had no idea that the blonde would erase everything and leave nothing behind in one move. He knew that even with his armor on, he would not have been able to fight if the blonde had hit him with it at full power. He thought to himself, thank god he didn't use it at full power. This is really a new one. I've never seen him use it before. 
The Serutobi yelled back through the strong winds. He trained it in Kumo. This isn't even it at full strength. I say this is only at half strength so as not to kill the girl, it told the old man. He'll make me proud. A thought about how strong the boy was and how it would help his village since Naruto had married his adopted daughters. When the wind died down, Gaia could be seen panting. Half of her body was the color of sand and was cracked so badly that it was about to break apart. That wasn't how her right side of the face, right arm, or left leg looked. They were all cut up. You weak girl. Your father is kicking your behind without even using his full power. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Shukaku yelled inside Gaia's head, making her hold her head. The sand swirled around her and quickly put her armor in place. When Naruto saw the crazy look on her face, he took things more seriously. She screamed, this is my blood. My blood. I'll kill you. Shukaku had completely lost it as she threw huge amounts of sand at Naruto. He saw that he couldn't get away without putting the audience in danger because the sand was all around him and would crush him from all sides. Naruto smiled and let the sand wrap around him. His sword began to glow. Gaia gasped and said, Sand Coffin. As she said, Sand Bury. Her jutsu never came together because the sand coffin exploded in a bright flash that blinded everyone who looked at it. At the end of the light show, they saw a new person standing in the arena. It wasn't Naruto, because he was standing next to the man. This man had fair skin, red hair, and green eyes with black rings around them. The Japanese word for love was written on the left side of his forehead. Dark pants that came to a few inches below the knees and were the length of his legs were tied with laces. He also wore a red coat with long sleeves and slits in the lower half of the front and back. He carried his gourd in a gray vest that was held in place by a single strap over his left shoulder and two buckled belts. He also had another pair of belts around his waist that he wore without much thought. He looked into Gaia's eyes with his arms crossed. It's been a while hasn't it? Gara. When Naruto talked to the man next to him, everyone was shocked. Many of the Suna ninja who were there during the invasion thought Naruto had called up a male version of Gaia. A lot of people from the other countries yelled that the blonde was lying by calling in another fighter to help him. A Suna shinobi yelled at Naruto, that's cheating. As many people began to boo him. They watched with wide eyes as Konkuro and Tamari saw the male version of Gara. They knew who this man was from Naruto's stories, but they still couldn't believe how powerful he was. It wasn't as good as Naruto's, but it was better than Goku's. He had the same aura that Naruto did, which was one that made people respect him. When Hiruzen and Danzo looked down at the arena, they were interested. People didn't expect the male Ichibi Jinchuriki that Naruto said he had gotten as an ally at the cage level. Wow, Naruto could really do that much. A lot of people in Suna were scared of the man who looked a lot like their feared Jinchuriki but felt and looked even stronger than she did. The shinobi knew from one look that the man had been in the war and lost many loved ones. It only made him scarier. Gara kept staring at the redhead in front of them and said, Naruto, it's been a while since we've seen each other in person. The two shinobi didn't pay attention to the cries from the crowd. They kept talking. SP this is her huh? She's stronger than I was during the chunin exams. Gara stated. The blonde next to him smiled and said, well, Everyone here is two years older than in our world, so she has had more time to train than you. Naruto looked up at the cages and gave them a small nod. This meant something different to Orochimaru than it did to the other two cages. It was about time. Naruto asked his friend, would you mind taking care of her and treating her the same way I treated you? Gara gave Naruto a sideways glance and said, all right. I'll show her what I've learned from the war and from living after death. He then took a step toward Gaia, who jumped in fear. Even Shukaku felt a little scared around the Godem case cage. People in the crowd were quiet as Gara walked calmly toward Gaia. Before Orochimaru could start the invasion, A and Hiruzen jumped out of their seats and kicked the snake out of the stadium and onto one of the village's bigger roofs. Even though two cages fighting wasn't enough to shock people who weren't Konoha Janin, the huge waves of Konoha Anbu with Kumo Shinobi who started fighting the Sand Ninja were. He smiled and jumped over to where the cages and Orkamaru were. Genin from Konoha and people from other places looked confused by the sudden fighting. Narui asked her sister figure, Kazumi. Nichan, what's going on? 
Kazumi yelled as she knocked out Asuna Chunin and killed an Otto Janin, Suna and Otto are invading. Go help the civilians get to somewhere safe. While Kunoichi fought off her enemies, Narumi could see that her Sherigan was already at work. She yelled, I'm not leaving you. As she stabbed an Otto Genin. Before going to fight Konkuro and Tamari, the other Konoha Genin agreed with them and nodded. She saw her brother walking toward where the cages were going to fight. Where is Naru? Kun going. To help the Hokage, Danzo, and Rakage fight Orochimaru. Might Guy said as he used a leaf whirlwind to kick Asuna Janin away. Between fights, Sayuri yelled, Damn it, he better come back in one piece. She then heard a loud buzzing sound. Everyone in the village looked out the gate and saw a huge seven. Winged beetle fighting two huge summons that looked like three. Headed snakes. Gamabuna was also fighting another one. To many Suna and Auto ninja at the gates, the attack on the summons made them wonder, is that a biju? There were supposed to be ten of them, but some mysterious Anbu ninjas from Konoha destroyed most of them. One of the Auto Janin yelled, I thought they only had the Kayubi. Right before being killed by an Anbu with purple hair. Along with Gara and Gaia. Gara looked at Gaia for a few more seconds while the invasion raged all around them. The contest was broken up by Gaia's roar and the launch of a big sand claw at Gara. Gara raised one hand and blocked the claw before it could hit him. Gallia yelled, Die! In a voice that sounded almost crazy. CZ. Several strands of sand shot at Gara, who stood still as they quickly came toward him. He waved his hand and told them to turn around and shoot at Gaia. The female Gara was able to avoid the sand attack, but she got caught in a sphere of sand that Gara made. I have to get her out of the village, the male read. Head thought as he made the sphere with the angry Jinchuriki fly away from the village. He followed it on a cloud of sand after it. As soon as they were far enough from the village, the sand ball exploded, revealing Gaia in a shape that was only partly changed. She had changed into Shukaku. Her right arm and half of her face had changed, and a big tail came out of her tailbone. As her right eye turned into Shukaku's, her gourd seemed to merge into her. This is where the battle starts, Gara said as he flicked his hand and a big wave of sand shot out of his gourd and hit Gaia. The two waves of sand hit each other, but Gara had so much control over them that he was able to shape them into a spear and throw it at Gaia. Gaia growled and reached out to touch the spear, which made it merge with her. Gaia yelled, Suna Shuriken! And threw several short sand shurikens at the older redhead. With a simple movement of his hands, Gara built a wall of sand in front of him. The sand shuriken were easily absorbed by the bigger sand body. Gara then changed the wall into a big hand with another move. Gaia was smashed against a tree by the force of the hand. The tree almost fell over. Gara looked at girl coldly and said, give up. I know all of your moves, but you only know a small part of what I can do. It was very hard for Gaia to get away from the sand hand, but she had made some progress. The Shukaku yelled as he pushed more and more of his chakra into Gaia, stupid girl. Let mother handle this. After we kill this jerk, we can kill father. The girl with red hair screamed as the sand around her began to stick to her. After the expedition, Gaia's body looked a lot like Shukaku's, except for the legs, which were still bare. Gaia let out another wild roar and threw another huge wave of sand at Gara. He had to dodge when he thought he could no longer control her sand. I can't use her sand against her anymore because of Shukaku. Also, if I use my own sand, it will make her stronger. Gara thought to himself, I guess it's time to test this out, as the girl threw pieces of sand at him. Everyone in the forest could hear Gaia's crazy voice yelling, stop moving. As Gara dodged every attack. Gara asked Gaia, why would I do that? Let me show you what I can do. He looked up and saw a huge wave of sand coming at him. Gara whispered, Platinum Sand Waterfall Flow, and a seal appeared on each of his hands. Then, a large amount of grayish-white sand came out of the seal can and hit Gaia's wave of sand. Each attack cancelled the other out, but Gara's white sand went back to him while Gaia's fell to the ground in the forest. Gara said as the white powder swirled around him, This is something I learned from my father in the afterlife. This is my Platinum Sand. It is denser than sand and even gold. Gaia roared, ah, when she thought about her dad's gold dust. The anger she was feeling let the shukaku inside her take over. 
Huge clouds of sand rose from the ground and wrapped around Gaia, turning her into the Shukaku. The Biju yelled, finally. I'm free. Time to party. Because it was so happy to be in charge and free to go crazy. Gara told the Biju, don't move so quickly. I will stop you. He then threw another wave of sand at it. Silver sand wrapped around Shukaku's arm and became part of it when he raised an arm to block the attack. The Biju could feel right away that his arm was heavier than it had been. The former case cage was hit by a hail of air bullets as Shukaku yelled, damn it. You just like fighting the bitch's annoyance of a father. Die. Gara was able to dodge all of Shukaku's attacks before launching his own attack with several platinum spears that went deep into his stomach. Gara held out his hands and said, you can't win Shukaku. This made another surge of platinum come out of the seals on his hands. Shukaku avoided the wave of white dust because he knew what it was. Gara only flicked his hand, which made the dust turn and hit the tanuki in the side. Silver sand pushed its way into Shukaku's body, making him slide a little. The biju roared, that's it. As its arms split into ten pieces. Shukaku threw all ten of his huge arms at Gara. Gara held out his hands and collected all the platinum dust that wasn't already fused into Shukaku into a huge wall that the arms couldn't reach. Gara asked Shukaku, is that all you can do? I have to say I'm disappointed in you. You used to make my life hell, but now you're just an ant at my feet. He let out all the dust from the seals in his hands and began to pull more from the ground. I've been drawing platinum and turning it into dust since the beginning of this battle. This battle is over. Giant platinum sand coffin. Gara yelled as the white dust began to gather and wrap around the biju. The dense dust was getting into Shukaku's body, and he thrashed to get away from it. The giant tanuki yelled, damn you human. You're ruining my fun. As he was pushed to his knees and his body began to lift. Gara didn't say anything as he kept pushing his dust into Biju's body. Shukaku quickly changed from a sandy color to a whitish gray color. Gara finally caused Shukaku to fall apart because he was so dense. The redhead watched as the Biju kept trying to get up, but the tanuki could only get up a few inches. He lowered himself so that he was face to face with the biju and said calmly, it's over, Shukaku. You can barely move now. The biju's body was now made of pure platinum. Gara looked right into Shukaku's crazy eyes and said, now it's time for us to talk. Ha. Huh. Like I'd ever talk to you. You're just like that jerk, the Yandaimi Keisukeijiya you just want to ruin my fun. Well, I wouldn't stand for it. If I can't have fun, I'll make the bitch do it for me. Tanuki laughed out loud at Gara, who gave the biju a mean look. Gara held out his hand and clenched his fist and said, You're really annoying. Shukaku screamed in pain as the platinum dust inside him began to twist and turn, hurting him very badly. It was painful for the beast, so Gara watched as it yelled and cursed. Shukaku yelled at the war veteran who kept torturing the raccoon dog, Fuck you bastard. Gara told the Tanuki, You will stop trying to take over Gaia and let her sleep in peace. You will also stop tempting her to kill people or saying you are her mother. If you keep doing these things, I'll have Naruto talk to you himself. The Tanuki was about to argue until Gara brought up Naruto. When Shukaku heard that Gara was going to tell Naruto, his eyes got really big. Shukaku begged, No. Please don't tell father. No one but father. It was impossible for Gara not to raise an imaginary eyebrow when he saw how the Ichibi reacted when he brought up Naruto. It was pretty funny to see the biju beg. Gara told the Ichibi, like I said, stop doing what you're doing to Gaia and go back to your cage. The Ichibi complained about how unfair life was before running into Gaia. Gara made a soft cushion of white sand, and the girl with red hair fell into it. The former case cage sealed off the platinum sand again, leaving Gaia on the ground in the forest. It was Gara who floated down to the clearing where Gaia was. Gaia began to crawl away from Gara as soon as she saw him coming toward her. She yelled, stay away from me. As she scratched at the ground, but she wasn't strong enough to move. She screamed, I will not let my existence be erased. As she fought hard to get away from the older redhead. When Gara stopped right in front of her, he said calmly, I will not hurt you Gaia. Chan. The man who looked like a copy of Gaia made her eyes fill with fear. She thought he was going to kill her. In a kinder tone, Gara knelt down next to him and said, we need to talk. 
Gaia asked Gara, what do you want? As she kept trying to get away from her. Gara told the female Jinchuriki, call me down, I need to talk to you. Why do you kill people? She looked at him. Gara knew why she killed people because he was her in a way. I need to prove my existence. If I don't kill then I have no reason to live. Gaia told me. It seemed like she felt better when she was with this man. She thought she knew him, even though they had never met. Gara told her in a sympathetic voice, I see, you kill to give yourself a meaning. Gara knelt down in front of her and said, I used to be the same as you. Gara talked about his fight with Naruto and said, actually, I am you, just like Naruto is also Narumi. San. I used to kill to prove myself, but then I met Naruto. Gaia turned red when the male read. Haired talked about the blonde. Gara saw this and smiled. When Gaia defeated Gara, she looked at Gara with confusion and asked, What happened when he beat you? He thought me how to truly live. He thought me that I can prove my existence by protecting those that are important to me. That true power come when you fight and live for someone else. I used to live for myself after Yashimaru. San tried to kill me and you too. Gaia yelled at Gara, Don't bring up that jerk. He and my mother betrayed me. Gara looked at her with a soft eye. It wasn't his fault. Our father sent him to do it after we showed we couldn't control Shukaku properly. Yashimaru was our father's way of testing us to see if we could control the biju. Father made Yashimaru lie to us to make us angry. Our ka. San has always loved us. Her will, not the Shukaku's, runs our ultimate defense. Gara said, she never hated us. At that moment, San swirled around them and formed the shape of Karora. She really cared about us. She never wanted us to become Jinchuriki, Gara said as San swirled around his hands. Ka. San lives on in our San. She is the force that makes the San protect us. Now rest, Gara whispered as he put his hand on the back of her neck and made her fall asleep. When Naruto landed next to Danzo, A, and Hiruzen, they were all facing Orochimaru, who had taken off his case cage mask. This is the end of the line Orochimaru. I already beat you before in the forest of death, what makes you think you even have a slimmer of a chance now? Naruto said that. The snake Sanin growled at the blonde biju, you got lucky last time, brat, but this time I brought some help. Orochimaru slammed his palms on the ground, which made four coffins rise up. Two of the coffins said, first, and the other two said, second. While this was going on, four sound shinobi set up a purple wall that stopped the anbu from helping the cage. When the crypt doors opened, two men and two women were inside. Naruto knew right away who the four people in front of him were. The first man was tall, had tanned skin, and hair that fell to his waist. He wore a simple black suit over a dark red armor that looked like samurai armor. He also wore saddles and a Konoha helmet to protect his forehead. It is said that this man was the legendary master of the Mokutan Hashirama Senju. Mito Uzumaki, the first Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune, was the woman next to him. Mito had long, bright red hair and big eyes with no pupils. The Uzushiogakir symbol was on the back of the obi that she wore around her waist. She wore a fancy kimono with a high collar. She had three clips in the front of her hair and buns with hairpins in them. She had a violet diamond mark on her forehead and lips that were a dark shade of red. She also had tags in her hair that said things in Japanese. There was another man next to her. Tobarama Senju was the second Hokage and the best water-style wrestler who ever lived. The man Tobarama was tall and fair. Skinned. He had white, shaggy hair, red eyes, and three red marks on his face, one under each eye and one on his chin. He wore armor with the Senju symbol on it over a simple black suit. The white fur collar on his armor made it stand out. This armor was made of many blue metal plates that were shaped into different guards that went around his chest, waist, shoulders, and upper arms. Shoes and a hapuri with the Konoha symbol engraved on it were worn with this outfit instead of the more traditional forehead protector. He wore two bands on each arm under his shoulder armor. Naruto wished he didn't have to fight the last woman. It was Narumi's mother Kashina Uzumaki, who was also his own mother. She was thin but feminine, with fair skin, violet eyes, and fiery red hair. She had her hair in a high ponytail and wore a blue helmet over her head. She wore a standard Konoha flak jacket over a black short. Sleeved shirt and black pants that fit her very well and came up to her calves. 
She looked at the group across from her and asked, where am I? When she saw Naruto, she cheered and yelled, Minato. Kun. He had to fight the urge to yell at her that he wasn't his father. Orochimaru corrected her, though, saying, I'm afraid you were mistaken Kashina. San. He is not your husband but a relative of his. Meet Naruto Namikaze. Naruto was watching the events with a secret anger. It looks like my jutsu is being used against our village, Ni. San, Tobarama said as he checked over his Edo Tensai body. The Nidam looked at Serutobi and then Danzo and said, to think that something I made would be used against my own student. On the last mission, he gave up his life so they could live. They were with him. While looking at his brother, Hashirama nodded and said, yes, it has Otudo. The wood-style user then turned to his student and said with a smirk, it's been a while Saru. Chan, you got old. Mito told Kashina, who was staring at the boy in front of her with shock, now, dear, this is not the time to joke around. The first Jinchuriki of the Kayubi told her fellow Uzumaki, Kashina. Chan, he is not Minato. He is this Naruto. And Kashina said, I know, but they look so much alike. Seeing him makes me worry about my daughter. Her eyes got cloudy. Naruto closed his eyes and crossed his arms. I have to say, Orochimaru, you might really work me out. Hashirama and Tobarama thought this was very familiar. The cold Naruto asked as he opened his eyes and saw Madara's eternal Mangekyu Sharingan. Do you think it's enough to beat me? As Hashirama looked at the same Sharingan he fought many years ago, he whispered, impossible. Hashirama. Dono, nothing is impossible. Hokage. Sama, I'll take Hashirama. Dono and Kashina. San out of here to give you three more room to fight. You know the plan, Naruto told Orochimaru as he put the seals in the heads of the four dead ninjas. He could have stopped at any time, but he really wanted to fight the Shodai because he knew no one else would be able to beat him. Naruto blurred into existence and appeared next to Hashirama. A copy of Naruto then appeared next to Kashina, and the four of them quickly disappeared from the roof, leaving the other three to fight. I'll take Orochimaru. Rakage. Dono, go after Tobarama. Sensei. You might be the only one who can keep up with him here. Danzo, go after Mito. Sensei, Hiruzen said as the three of them charged at the two dead shinobi. A put on his lightning armor and hit Tobarama in the face with a lightning. Powered punch. At the same time, Danzo pulled out a sword and attacked Mito, but she called up her own sword and blocked the attack. Hiruzen kept going and attacked Orochimaru straight on. The snake. Sanin charged at the old Hokage and tried to slash through him with his kusanagi, but his sensei turned to mud as soon as the blade hit him. The snake was in the way when the sandame slammed into him with Enma in staff form. The snake was able to twist his body out of the way. The Serutobi yelled at his student, you will not win, Orochimaru. And then charged at him again. Naruto and me. Naruto and his clone sent Hashirama and Kashina to one of the few places he knew he could be careless without hurting anyone. He jumped away from the two dead shinobi with a smirk. Naruto made a bunch of hand signs and yelled, Katen. Fire Annihilation Jutsu. To call on Madara's memories. He said, this is going to be fun. The huge wave of fire hit Hashirama and Kashina, who quickly jumped out of the way. Hashirama's other hand changed into several long tendrils that shot at Naruto as he made a one handed hand sign. The blonde concentrated his chakra in his eyes and whispered, Amaterasu. At the same time, black flames shot out from where Hashirama was standing. Hashima jumped away before the flames could hit him because he saw them coming. Since the flames were still after him, the Shodai had to backpedal away. Because of the seal in her, Kashina had to attack. She called up a katana and charged at the blonde Yandaimi. Lookalike. As he looked up at the Amaterasu, the red head caught his attention and made it stop in its tracks. Naruto had to avoid his mother's many swings, but Madara's Sharingan made it easy for him to follow all of her attacks. The Uzumaki woman told the blonde who dodged every attack, stand still and let me cut you. He smiled and said, but then I would get hurt. He then disappeared in a blur and came back behind her with a spiraling sphere of chakra. I said, Rasengan, as I hit her back with the chakra ball. Hiru would have done more, but Hashirama sent a water dragon at him, and he had to avoid it. The wood-style user got a mean look from Naruto. 
While Hashirama opened a big scroll and called up a bunch of ninja tools, Naruto said, this is getting fun. His Sharingan spun all over the place. Some pieces of wood tore through the ground and grabbed the weapons as they flew. The blonde biju didn't even have time to think before one of the branches threw a Fuma shuriken at him. The other branches then threw their own weapons at him as well. With a little help from his Jintan, Madara's Sharigan followed each weapon, which let the blonde avoid all of them. Naruto felt a strong urge to jump before he could attack. By doing this, Naruto was able to avoid all the weapons that were thrown at him by the trees that Hashirama had grown behind him to catch them. The blonde tried to do another jutsu but was stopped by a chain that wrapped around his right leg and threw him against the wall of the valley. She yelled at the cage, Hashirama. Sama. He's a biju. When she felt his chakra. The cage nodded and made a set of hand signs. Big pieces of wood flew out of the ground and hit the blonde, but a dark blue blade from the dust cloud cut them off. Naruto walked out of the dust filled with a blue aura, holding a sword in an ethereal skeleton arm. Naruto said coldly, it looks like I might have to take this fight more seriously. The blue shroud and the skeleton grew faster and faster until muscle and skin appear on top of them. Naruto called out, Suzanoo as he made the ethereal warrior another chakra sword. Having the cages and Danzo. A steered clear of another water dragon coming from the Nidem, who had lost control of his body just like Mito. As he charged at the zombie shinobi, who jumped away, he thought, damn this guy is annoying. Ah. The rakage yelled as he made the lightning stronger around him. Because he was moving so fast, it showed up over Tobarama in what looked like a flash. Lightning oppression horizontal chop. A yelled as he hit Tobarama with a simple but powerful lightning. Covered chop that made the body split in half. As the former cage was getting better, pressed the seal Naruto had given him on the man's arm. He thought to himself, all I have to do now is hold him off until Naruto activates the seal. The buff cage jumped away from Tobarama as he was getting better. As the Naidem Hokage threw small water spheres at A, he said, this jutsu is a pain in my ass. It was the Reikage who charged at the Senju and fought him again. Mito was throwing Senban at Danzo from a little ways away. She wasn't as good as Tobarama or Hashirama, but she was still a strong Kunoichi on her own. Danzo didn't seem to mind as he dodged what looked like an endless stream of needles. Danzo whispered, Futon stream, as he let out a strong wind stream that pushed Mito back a bit. Fuinjutsu, flowering explosion, Mito said as seals appeared on the ground around Danzo. The undead Kunoichi was able to stick to the ground and make a set of hand signs. Each seal looked a lot like a flower. The elder's eyes got really big, and then there was a huge explosion that engulfed him. A blade of wind cut Mito's left arm off behind as she was about to go help Orochimaru fight the Sandame. It was Danzo standing behind her when she looked over her shoulder. His arm was what caught her eye. Along with having ten Sharingans implanted into it, it didn't look natural. It also had Hashirama's face on it. That was close. It won't happen again, Danzo said as he threw two wind. Powered shurikens at the Uzumaki. The shurikens vanished in a puff of smoke. He thought, she sealed them, and then he did a fire jutsu. Kaden. Great fireball Judas. As seals appeared in the air and began to absorb the fire jutsu, the red. Head said, fire sealing method. Once the fireball was completely sealed, Mito spoke again, release. With that one word, the seal opened, sending the fireball straight back at Danzo, who replaced himself with a tile. Danzo called out, futon. Vacuum serial waves, as he moved his head in different directions to send out several wind blades at different angles. Mito responded with another seal that kept the wind blades from moving. The Shimura, on the other hand, had time to throw several kanai into Mito's stomach with explosive tags on them. Thanks to her skill with seals, Mito didn't blink as she tore off the tags and turned them off. Before she took the tags out of her own seals, the Uzumaki crushed them. These tags had five seals on them. With the tags in her hands, that Shodai's wife charged at the old man. Because of the seals on his feet, Danzo couldn't move out of the way. He was stuck on the floor. While she activated the tags, Mito said, mutually multiplying explosive tags. Each tag released five tags before exploding, and each of the five tags released five more. This set off a chain reaction of explosions, as each new tag made five more. Before the explosion could stop, 
Danzo walked out of it with his eyes closed on his arm. As Danzo watched the series of tags explode in front of him, he said, this is taking too long. I'm too old for this shit. The seal Naruto gave him was in his hand. Orochimaru, who had thrown his kusanagi again, was hitting Hiruzen over and over again from farther away. The old Hokage yelled as he jumped away from the snake Sanin, you will never win, Orochimaru. He laughed at his old teacher and said, please, you're an old man now. If you were a few years younger, you might have a chance, but right now you're weak. The snake Sanin yelled as several snakes flew from his sleeves at Hiruzen, who built a wall of stones to block the snakes. Hiruzen yelled at the snake, you will not leave this place alive. As the snake jumped over the earth wall. Kaden. Inferno stream. Hiruzen yelled as he opened his mouth and let out a huge stream of fire. Orochimaru jumped over the fire and called up a big white snake to attack the person who called the monkey. The Sandame was able to avoid the snake and fight back by making the ground under Orochimaru muddy. He then swung his big staff at the Sanin, which also turned to mud. Hiruzen said, shit, as snakes came out of the ground and tried to wrap around him. The old man was able to exchange himself for a nearby tile and then charged at Orochimaru, who had come out of nowhere with the Kusanagi in his mouth. Hiruzen quickly turned around to avoid the sword and kicked Orochimaru away. As Orochimaru got back up from the ground, he laughed. The snake. Like man teased his old teacher, who gave him a mean look and said, that was a good hit, sensei. I didn't think you would be able to dodge that attack in your old age. Hiruzen threw several shuriken at Orochimaru and said, this old man can still kick your ass across this country. With a wave of one hand, the dozen shuriken turned into hundreds. Orochimaru yelled, Doden. Earth style wall and spat mud out of his mouth, which rose up and blocked all the shurikens. The person who called the snake was about to use another jutsu when Enma, who had changed back into his normal form, hit him. Before Orochimaru could get back on his feet, the Sandame Hokage jumped on top of him and hit the roof hard. The town. The Otto and Suna ninjas were being pushed back faster than they thought. They had no idea that Kumo would help the leaf, that their Jinchuriki would not do any damage, and that they would have to fight three bijus at the same time. They had lost most of their army to the Nanabi, and when the Hachibi and Nibi showed up, they knew they couldn't win the war. One of the Suna commanders yelled, retreat. He told his men to stop fighting and leave the village. As soon as the call went out, all of the Suna shinobi who had not been killed or captured left the village. The shinobi from Otto looked around, not sure what to do next. Their friends surrounded them and left them. Keep fighting. If Orochimaru. Sama finds out that we ran, we will face something worse than death. A sound Jonin yelled to his men, making them all attack again. Naruto and me. There was a big ethereal giant around Naruto that was attacking Hashirama and Kashina with four different swords. It was hard for them to avoid the attacks. Hashirama normally wouldn't have a problem with this, but Orochimaru severely limited his power so that he could stay in charge of Hashirama. Kashina had never fought anything like this before. She knew that if she made one mistake, she would be cut in half. She had lost at least one arm before. She told herself, thank Kami, I'm not really alive or I would be dead right now. Hashirama made some roots to wrap around Madara's Suzanoo. Naruto cut through some of them and said, this is getting old fast. He thought they would have a great fight like he hadn't had since Madara, but Hashirama isn't even close to full power because of Orochimaru, and his mother wasn't strong enough to give him the fight he wanted. Kashina yelled, is this boring? As a chain shot out from under Naruto and threw him off the Suzanoo. A piece of wood tore out of the stone ground and wrapped around Naruto, making a prison that covered the whole area and kept the two undead shinobi from seeing Naruto. Before the red and black energy shot out through the small holes in the wooden prison, there was a strange silence in the valley. As a big bulge appeared on one side of the prison, then another one on the other side, and so on. The sound of wood cracking could be heard. Shit. Hashirama said as he pulled more wood out of the ground to wrap around the prison even more, as much as he could with the power he had. It made Hashirama feel better to see that the strange power was no longer leaking. The moment of relief was short. Lived, though, as the now. Big prison blew up in a cloud of red and black energy. Naruto came out of the broken pieces of Hashirama's wood prison in a form he had never used before. Naruto's body looked like it was full of red and black energy. His Hauri looked like a black flame and had red seals on it. 
He wore a red energy shirt with a black seal where his old seal used to be. The new seal looked like a circle with a smaller circle inside it and a black line going up his body to his neck. The energy that looked like flames was also all over his pants. His skin had turned black and developed two horn. Like bangs. His eyes were no longer moderate as Sharingan. Instead, they were four rings on top of a pure red background that covered all of them. There were three tomos inside each of the rings. Naruto said, you should be proud to see this form. You are the first person who has ever seen me enter this form. I guess it's time I fully introduced myself. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, and I am the Naidem Jubi no Kishin and Rokudame Hokage of Konoha. The nine tomo in his eyes spun around as he showed off his power. This was his human form with ten tails. It felt a lot like Kurama's but with a lot more power. Both shinobi were shocked and speechless when they heard the news, but they chose not to think about it any longer. Both of the undead ninjas were thrown away from each other when a black chakra arm shot out from Naruto's back and hit the ground between them. He walked calmly toward Hashirama when chains of gold came out of the ground and wrapped around him. Kashina said with a big grin, gotcha. Since you're a biju, my chains would work great to hold you down. Because she didn't want to fight for that snake Orochimaru, she had to say that this fight was fun. Naruto laughed and said, he he he, if you really think that this will be enough to hold me down, then you're dreaming. He then began to pull the chains apart. Ah. He yelled as he snapped the chains around him, making them disappear. Kashina was shocked that her chains didn't work. She had used them to easily restrain the Kyubi, but this man was able to easily break through them. She thought to herself, what kind of monster is this man? As she stared at him in shock at his raw power. Even though she felt bad about it, she had to say that it made her a little excited right now. He told her, see? Your chains can't stop me. I'm on a whole different level of power than the Kyubi. My strength is that of all nine bijus fused together. Now stay back while I have some fun with the Shodai. Then he made the king of hell appear behind her and eat her whole body before leaving the mortal realm. Naruto jumped back quickly as roots grew out of the ground where he had been standing. The Shodai stood on a tree that was tall enough to reach the top of the stone statue of himself. He smiled and jumped to the top of the stone Madara head. How strange that he was standing on Madara's head while fighting Hashirama, who was standing on his own head. He had just used Madara's eyes to fight Madara's rival. Itachi, or Izumi as Naruto knew her, sat in the trees near the valley and watched the battle. She was amazed by Naruto's power. Naruto had even more power than he had used in the battle. As she watched them stare at each other from the tops of the two big statues, she thought to herself, wow, this battle is like nothing I've ever seen. Naruto asked the dead shinobi, are you ready, Hashirama? San? The dead shinobi smiled back at him. He asked, so it's just Hashirama. San now? Let's see if your power is really all it's cracked up to be. Hashirama said this as he felt the chains Orochimaru had put on him loosen because Naruto's aura was messing with the control seal. There were red spots on his face and around his eyes, and there was a mark on his forehead that looked like a third eye. He thought to himself, sage mode. Let us see. Naruto yelled, Jubi. Rasengan. As he shaped a huge Rasengan twice as big as himself and threw it out with his right arm. Saying, Senpo Mokaton. Great wood dragon jutsu. Hashirama slammed the statue's back, letting a huge wooden dragon fly straight at Naruto with a loud roar. The two great jutsus fought between the two statues, sending a huge shockwave across the country as they competed for power. Eventually, they cancelled each other out in a huge explosion that broke the ground at the valley's bottom and almost blew away all the trees around it. What strength! Izumi thought as she used chakra to hold on to the tree and hoped it wouldn't fall over. They both looked at each other in the eyes when the smoke cleared. Both jumped at each other out of the blue, in the blink of an eye, both Naruto and Hashirama hit each other in the face, sending the other flying back toward the statue they were standing next to. Naruto caught himself in midair and made a few small bijudamas in the shape of cones. He then fired them all at the sage. When Hashirama saw this, he made a single hand sign. More wooded tendrils spread out from his statue and went through the barrage. A lot of noise and light filled the valley as Naruto's attack went off. It hit Hashirama on the head. As the Shodai spat out a large stream of water that changed into a large dragon, he said, Sweden. Water Dragon Jutsu. 
it was the water dragon coming at Naruto. The biju vanished in a flash of black, letting the jutsu hit the Madara. As soon as Hashirama felt Naruto above him, he jumped off the stone version of himself just in time to avoid being hit by Naruto's blast. Hashirama saw Naruto dive right for him as he landed on the valley floor. Just as Naruto was about to hit him, a big piece of wood came out of the valley wall and threw him across the ravine. Naruto pulsed his power, and as soon as the pillar hit the wall, it blew up, giving the Shodai no time to rest. What did the sage do when he saw a black chakra arm with a big Rasengan coming at him? The first one was easy to avoid, but what kept the Senen alert were the nine arms that came after it, each with an even bigger ball of energy spiraling around it. He was able to sense the attack's movements and avoid all of them thanks to his sage mode. However, he was caught off guard when another attack came out of the ground. The dead sage was able to build a dome out of wood around himself just in time to block the attack that was trying to eat him but fell short. Naruto glared at the dome and took a deep breath before launching a large fireball that was similar to the phoenix flower jutsu but much bigger. The attack went right through the wooden shell, but before Naruto could do anything, wooden strands came up from the ground and wrapped around him. He couldn't get out of the trap before Hashirama hit him in the jaw with a chakra. Enhanced Punch Naruto couldn't fly because of the wooden restraints, which was a bad thing because Hashirama hit Naruto with a series of unbelievably powerful close. Range attacks before the blonde got free and ran away from the powerful legend. Now this is a battle, they both thought as they looked each other in the eyes with the kind of respect that only two shinobi of that level could show. In both of their minds, the only thing that could have made this battle better would have been if Madara had also come back to life. But that wasn't to be. He smirked and cleaned up the blood that was running out of the corner of his mouth. This is a real battle. Two spirits are clashing with all their power and will. Now, Ashira, show me everything you have. Naruto yelled as he made another bijudama and fired at the dead cage. The founder of Konoha used his Geke Jenke to get out of harm's way. It was very loud and shook the valley and everything nearby. At the valley, they were now drawing a crowd. Izumi and Zetsu were watching, along with most of the Akatsuki in projection form and a few shinobi from nearby villages. That is, two busty kunoichi wearing headbands with flowers on them. As they planned their next moves, both shinobi circled each other and stared each other down. In the blink of an eye, they were in a taijutsu fight like no other. Hashirama quickly got up and kicked Naruto in the ribs after Naruto hit him with a right hook. Naruto flew away but he used two chakra claws to grab the ground and get back on his feet. Before getting even a few feet away from the dead cage, the biju ran off. He tensed up as he tried to figure out who Naruto was, but a huge chakra fist shot out of the ground and threw him into the air. A second hand reached out and fired a cone. Shaped bijudama at him. Senpo Mokaton. Heaven's forest barrier. He called out, and several trees grew out of his arms to form a sphere shaped barrier around him. The trees got back together and formed a solid ball of wood. The strong attack hit the shield right in the middle, setting off another huge explosion and breaking the shield all the way through. Hashirama jumped through the huge hole that Naruto's attack made. There was another close. Range battle between the two, but both ended in a tie. Naruto yelled at the sage, show me what you have. And punched him away. There were hundreds of big roots that came out of the ground under them and tried to catch and crush Naruto. Hashirama yelled, as you wish. The biju began to wind around each of the roots, and they tried to hold him down. He had to avoid ten more that came out to try to crush him for everyone he did. After what seemed like forever, a root finally wrapped around Naruto's angle and pulled him into a large group of roots that curled around him. He could feel his strength leaving his body slowly as the wood hit him. Naruto, on the other hand, kept struggling to get away. He yelled, I will not lose. As he used his ability to make several arms to pull out all the roots that were trying to hold him back. Hashirama glared at Naruto as he put even more chakra into his jutsu, making the roots that attacked Naruto stronger and more numerous. It was like a god yelling at the shinobi, you can't win. My Mokaton can stop any biju. Ten Penchi. That was all it took for the scene that followed to be called, Complete Chaos. Now, the Valley of the End was the center of the worst natural disaster ever. From where Naruto was, lightning strikes spread across the valley and quickly turned into tornadoes. Huge waves of water ripped through the valley from where Naruto was being held. 
The power made the earth shake and lift off the ground. In order to stay above the water and avoid the tornadoes, Hashirama had a hard time. He also couldn't build a platform out of wood because the ground kept moving around randomly. This is not real. The wise man thought as he jumped out of the way of a tornado, not even Madara could do this much damage in such a short time. Eventually, the whole disaster gathered in one place, and then it went off with a huge explosion that the world hadn't seen since the time of the first Rakuto. The blast looked like a huge mushroom cloud, and lightning bolts came out of the big top of the cloud. He wasn't able to avoid this attack like he did before, and he was caught in the aftermath of the explosion. We have the Akatsuki. This is what a real god can do. He was about shoulder. Length and had purple eyes with four rings around the pupil. I have a long way to go before I can fight him. As he watched the fight happen right in front of him, the man thought, I claim to be god, but I know that if I ever fought one of these two, I would die. He then looked to his side at the only woman in the group and said, but if we have two, I will fight him for our dream. He said this quietly so no one could hear him. Going back to the battle. The cloud of doom slowly went away, and the valley was now completely destroyed. There was no more of the two statues that used to be there. The waterfall that used to be between the statues no longer had any water in it. Naruto was panting in the middle of a huge crater. As Naruto looked around the valley, he thought to himself, shit, I don't have enough control over this form. He could see the broken pieces of a wooden dome in front of him. Naruto said with a small smile, I did it. He knew he had been hurt inside, but all he had to do now was wait for Danzo to put his seal on Mito, set off the seals, and then kill Orochimaru. Naruto walked away from the dome in silence. His chakra cloak fell away, revealing a badly hurt and bleeding Naruto. There was a low rumbling that broke the silence. Say, no way. Naruto thought this before he jumped back to avoid a big wooden spike that came out of the ground. Hashirama, who had lost his sage mode and was missing an arm, threw a punch at Naruto just in time for him to avoid it. Naruto's control over yin and yang stopped the healing effects of the Edo Tensai, even though it should have healed. Hashirama was fully grown. His armor and the tops of his clothes were all destroyed, leaving him with only his pants on. He only had one arm left. Hashirama looked Naruto straight in the eyes and said, it's been a while since I was pushed this far. He knew that his brother's jutsu kept him alive when he would have died otherwise. Naruto said as his eyes turned back into Madara's Sharingan, same. I have to admit that I thought I had finished you off with that last one. That damn jutsu is so annoying, I guess it's time we ended this. Hashirama smiled and sent his chakra into his right arm, making it swell with muscle as he went back into sage mode. There was a dark green aura around them. When Naruto felt the chakra being sent to his arm, he smiled. As he held out his hand, a ball of black flames quickly grew until it was about a foot across. The two shinobi who looked like gods began to run at each other and slowly sped up. Senpo. Divine Fist of Nirvana. Amaterasu. Odama Rasengan. In their battle for power, the two attacks caused the whole country to shake as the ground beneath them cracked and splintered. The power was so strong that it made the Akatsuki's ideas disappear. Naruto said through his teeth, Hasarama. San, you are by far the strongest person I have faced since my battle with Madara. The other shinobi clenched their teeth in victory. Same, the Shodai replied. I don't know how you fought Madara, but having his eyes proves that you did. Because of the attacks, the ground below them broke apart, and the valley turned into a crater. As the valley grew bigger than it was before, everyone who was watching had to leave the area. I can't lose this battle, I won't lose it. I think to myself, Naruto said as he looked into Hashirama's eyes. The dead cage's body erupted in black and red energy as Naruto yelled, no more games. As Naruto put more chakra into his Rasengan, it got bigger. Both of them could feel the world's chakra swirling around them, making a black sphere that wrapped around them. Naruto still felt this way about the last fight he had with Sasuke in the Valley of the Dead when they were kids. The two shinobi, who were almost godlike, quickly saw scenes from the lives of each other. Naruto saw Hashirama's childhood during the Warring Clans, his rise to power, his fight with Madara before the village was built, the start of Konoha, Madara's betrayal, and finally the fight between him and Madara. An old slideshow of Naruto's life was shown by Hashirama. He saw how he was raised, his time on Team 7, Sasuke's betrayal of Madara, him leaving to train with Jiraiya, his return to Konoha, 
his rescue of the case cage, Naruto's fight with the powerful pain, Naruto meeting A and then B, Hashirama seeing Naruto fight Kurama, and finally pictures from the war showing Naruto facing Madara and the Jubi with his friend Gara by his side. Naruto. Kun, you've been through so much. You and that Sasuke kid reminded me a bit of myself and Madara. You're someone I would love to have as Hokage, he smiled. As Naruto's cloak disappeared, he smiled and told the Mokutan user, I was Hokage, but in the end, Konoha was still destroyed. He still thought he was to blame for Konoha's destruction. He thought that if he had been stronger, he might have been able to save them from the Jubi. Perhaps you should forgive yourself. You couldn't have stopped that from happening, but now you're in a new world and you've found love. As Shodai Hokage, I give you the title of Guardian of Konoha. With that, Hashirama turned into dust and went back to the pure world. When the ball of chakra exploded into light, it made the world outside the sphere stop. A tower of nature chakra rose into the air. Naruto was out of breath as he lay on his back at the bottom of the valley. The explosion of power took off most of his clothes, and his own blood was all over them. He did it. In most of their fights, he beat Hashirama Senju 1. On. 1. When he turned around, he saw the ruins of what used to be the Valley of the End. The statues of Madara and Hashirama were now just a pile of rocks, but you could still make out their faces in the rubble. Naruto said, I can't stay here. I need to go back to Konoha. He slowly stood up, but then he fell. Before he hit the ground, though, someone he knew caught him. If you want to call Itachi by his real name, Naruto looked up at his face. Izumi held Naruto and said in a calm but kind voice, rest. You've been through a lot. She still couldn't believe she had just seen the battle. That was one of the most amazing and scary displays of pure power she had ever seen, and she would never forget it. Naruto made a hand sign and said, not yet. I still need to activate the seals on the other two reanimated shinobi back in Konoha. As soon as he said, Fuin, Naruto passed out. Cage fight. As the seals went off, Danzo and A gasped as they saw the two dead shinobi crumble into dust. Even though Mito had used her suicide jutsu, Danzo was still able to put his seal on her. He was able to sneak it on her back while she was getting ready. This seal had chakra from both Naruto and the Shinigami, who wanted the souls to go back to the underworld. Normally, she would have been able to break it. I had several cuts from Tobarama cutting him with his kanai and bruises from the blunt water jutsu. They were both very tired from the fight. Six of Danzo's Sharingans were killed in the battle with the Uzumaki. He sent her things, but they were all sealed and sent back at him, or she would use some kind of suicide jutsu to try to kill him. They paid attention again when they heard Orochimaru and Hiruzen both scream out in pain. With his Kusanagi, Orochimaru was able to stab the Sandame in the chest. Hiruzen had managed to sever Orochimaru's arms but the snake had used his control over the Kusanagi to pull it towards the two and skewered both himself and the old man. When Orochimaru thought he had won, he said with a big grin, this is your end, sensei. Hiruzen coughed up some blood and said, in case you haven't noticed you lost both your arms and stabbed yourself. His body had also been hurt by the battle. But he was glad he didn't have to fight Orochimaru and the reanimated ninjas by himself. Even if I die, I'll just come back. Unlike you, I have found ways to stay alive even after I die, Orochimaru said with a sly grin when he heard about his plan to come back to the world of the living. The Sandame spoke with a shudder in his voice as he said, the curse mark. They attacked Orochimaru and ripped Hiruzen's sword out before the two could say anything else. Don't worry, Hiruzen. I'll fix you up, Danzo told the man as he used Izanagi on the Hokage instead of himself to remove the stab wound in his chest. As the wall fell around them, Orochimaru said, well this isn't going as planned. I think I'll leave. The Anbu that were going around the barrier were stopped by Otto Shinobi. The Sound 4 jumped down and grabbed the Sanin, pulling it away from the Shinobi at the cage level. The three would have attacked if they didn't have to deal with a whole group of Otto Chunin and Janin who were ready to be shot. And Orochimaru was gone by the time they were done killing everyone else. They were too tired to look for him. Everyone who was in the battle was worn out. Soldiers that had been captured had to be put in cells to be questioned. Buildings that had been damaged or destroyed had to be fixed. Several shinobi and kunoichi that had died had to be cremated and then buried. After three days. In the hospital, Naruto stood next to Hiruzen's bed. 
The blonde had bandages on his wounds, but he could still move around because he was a Jubi and a close relative of God. After the battle, Danzo went back to his base to get Root back in order. I had been alone in his room while Kumo Shinobi watched over him. Naruto asked with a smirk, So how are you doing, Sandame? Don't know? The blonde's attitude made Hiruzen laugh, so he told him, I'm fine Naruto. San. Normally, he would have called him, Rokudame. Don't know, but Anbu was watching him to protect him from attackers. But from this battle I've learned that in my old age I'm no longer fit to lead this village, the old man said with a frown. He tried to cheer the old man up by saying, that's not true. You held your own against Orochimaru and stopped him. You can still protect this village. He almost had to go to his funeral again, which made Naruto even more sure that he was too sure of himself and putting his family and friends in danger. He already let Sayuri get the curse mark because he forgot to seal it while it was still fresh. For the second time, he was almost without his grandfather figure. I wish that was true but even if I could match Orochimaru I would never be able to up against the likes of people like Nagato or Madara. You even faced Hashirama and beat him. The Sandame said with a sad grin. It had always been his dream to fight and beat his sensei, but he was never strong enough. But this blonde in front of him was. It would have been a lie for Naruto to say anything. Hiruzen would have died in the fight if an enemy like Nagato or Madara had been there. Because of this, the third Hokage said with a warm smile, that's why I've made my choice. Elder man told the blonde, Naruto. San, I know it's not the same as your old title, but you're the only one in the village who has the power and experience to do what I want you to do. The blonde's eyes got really big when she realized what the elder man meant. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, I officially declare you Godem Hokage of Konoha. He let out a sigh as he finished reading the reports from the root shinobi he had sent to Kiri to help Zabuza defeat the Mizukage. There was no way Yugura could have done what he did, but Naruto had to stop him right now. Based on what Zabuza wrote in the message, he had teamed up with Mei Terumi, who was now the Mizukage in his world. Ya Raya asked the blonde in front of him, is something wrong, Hokage? Sama? He had been Godem Hokage for two months, and a lot had happened since then. The friendship between the two villages in Kumo had grown to a point where it had never been seen with another ally. The Hyuga clan still wouldn't accept Kumo as an ally, which was the only problem left with their alliance. That also included Hanada's problem, which is that she hates him. Because he was with Narumi, the woman Hyuga loved, and because he was the one who brought Kumo and Konoha together, he became the person she hated the most. After the invasion, Gara thought he might as well stay in the world and help bring Suna back up to speed with the other villages. With a little help from Naruto, he did this and reclaimed the title of Kei's Cage. She was able to train with him for a few months to learn how to control Shukaku. Gara told him that he could stay for about three years before he had to go back to the afterlife. After that, Gaia would go back to Suna and become Kei's Cage. Nothing was going on in Otto. There were extra steps Naruto took to make sure Orochimaru didn't get his hands on Sayuri because he knew the snake had a plan. He chose to join teams 7 and 9, and Sai was added to the mix. Naruto gave the sage a mean look and then turned to look at Danzo and Hiruzen, who were sitting next to the Sanin. First don't call me that, second our forces in Kiri have joined the rebellion but at the moment they are at a stalemate. On top of that Yugura's forces are slowly chipping away at the rebel armies. Mei Terumi. The leader of the rebels and Mizukage in my world is leading them but there have been sightings of men in black cloaks with red clouds heading towards Kiri. Naruto told his new group of advisors. He got rid of the other two elders and kept these three because they shared his goals, while the other two were only interested in themselves. Danzo said in a calm voice, Akatsuki. He had read everything he could find about the people in the group. Naruto was able to put together teams to fight each one if they ever came straight at Konoha because of that and the information he had on them. Exactly. From the descriptions I got the two are Izumi Uchiha and Kisame Hoshigaki. Mei. Chan and Zabuza may be strong but Mei. Chan will not be able to take on 3s. Rank Shinobi and Zabuza isn't at the level needed for him be able to take one out being only a high A. Rank Shinobi. Naruto said as he rubbed the tip of his nose's bridge. Why did he have to take this job again? So what will be our next move, Naruto? Kun? Hiruzen asked the young cage as he took a drag from his pipe. The young cage let out a frustrated growl. 
Naruto looked out the window at his village and said, I'll join you to kill Kisame and bring back Izumi. Chan. Zabuza and Mei. Chan can handle Yugura. The blonde replied to the former Hokage's question. Even though he knew it was bad for a cage to leave his village, he couldn't let the Akatsuki keep Kiri. Are you sure that is a good idea? What if Orochimaru makes his move on Sayuri? Chan? Hiruzen pondered. Then we need to be ready for anything. When she comes back in two days, give her tasks that will keep her in the village. Make sure there are always safety measures around her, and have Anbu watch her at all times. That's when the doorbell rang. Come in. Yugao walked in from the other side of the door. Naruto comforted her after she left the Anbu after Hayate's death and persuaded her to stay at Kunoichi. He then made her one of his personal guards. She smiled and said, Naruto. Kun. Naruto asked the former Anbu, Yugo. Chan, you got back early. Did something go wrong on your mission? She shook her head no. Naruto asked her, no, everything went fine. I got what you asked for. The purple. Haired woman smiled and took out two katanas. He took them from her with a smile and put them on his side. Katanas? Jiraiya asked as he saw the two swords Naruto had just picked up. Naruto smiled as he looked at Jiraiya, these two swords aren't just any run of the mill katanas. These are the Juchi Yosame and the Yuarakai. Te. These are two ancient and powerful swords forged by two of the greatest swordsmiths to ever live. The Juchi Yosame or the 10,000 Cold Knights is an evil sword that only cares for destruction and death. It is said that it will cut anything that crosses its path whether it be evil or good. It is also said that if someone without the power to fight back the darkness within it draws it, they will become overcome by its evil. The Yuarakai. Te or the tender hands-on is the opposite, it's a sword that only cuts those who are evil or deserve it. Naruto said as he drew the Juchi the room's air quickly gets cold as a sensation of dread filled the workplace. While Yugo wasn't cage level, she was the only one who really felt this. The dark feeling in the air made Hiruzen say, such an evil aura. He then turned to Yugo, who was shaking. The old Hokage asked the purplette, Yugo. San. Where did you find these swords? Naruto. Kun had learned that a cousin of Gado had gotten his hands on these blades and was planning on selling them away to missing Nin. He believed that they were too powerful to be left in the hands of people who would use them for evil so he sent me in a team to retrieve them. The former Anbu responded to the elder's question. The man only had about 30 untrained mercenaries, but they had 5 trained Anbu, so it wasn't hard. Hiruzen said, I see. He had no choice but to agree with Naruto's choice to take the swords. What would happen if someone like Obito or Pain got their hands on such a strong sword? It would not be pretty. Naruto smiled as he put the dark sword away and began to walk toward the door. I'll be leaving for Kiri in three hours. I'll try to return as soon as I take out Kisame. I already tagged Zabuza. San when I fought him in the wave so I'll be able to get there in a flash. Naruto said as he left the room with Buddy. Late that same day. He had left the village and now showed up in Kiri in the middle of a battle. That's it? He said this before he felt someone stab him. He turned around and cut the man in half through the waist while drawing Juchi Yosame. Naruto felt sick when he saw it, but he couldn't say anything because three more Kiri shinobi launched an attack on him. Before they could get to him, a huge cleaver cut off the heads of all three of them. The Zabuza then appeared in a shunshin and caught them. As he killed another Kiri Nin, Zabuza asked, What are you doing here, kid? Or should I call you Hokage? Sama? Naruto said as he put his first sword away and pulled out his second, I'm here to help. Word on the street is that Kisame Hoshigaki and Itachi Uchiha are going to help Kiri fight you guys. I'm going to kill them. The battlefield stopped moving and turned black and white. Naruto whispered, Jinten. Light speed massacre. Without any thought, Naruto faded away and reappeared behind each Kiri Nin before disappearing again. When Naruto showed up next to Zabuza, he shaved Yuarakai. Tay. With the click of the hilt hitting the scabbard, everything went back to normal, except that most of the Kiri Nin were covered in blood and some just passed out. Zabuza had a bad thought and yelled, Hooray for the Yandaimi Hokage Minato Namikaze. The rebels looked like they didn't know what to do. On the spur of the moment, no one thought to check to see if Minato was still alive. Yeah. Thank you Yandaimi. Dono. 
Three cheers for Minato Namikaze. Not long ago, people were calling Naruto, Minato, which made him very angry. I'm not Minato Namikaze. Naruto yelled, increasing the power of his voice and giving it an evil sound. After this, Naruto used a Jinten. Enhanced punch to hit Zabuza in the face. Before he felt a tap on the shoulder, Naruto said, Fuck you, Zabuza. Mei was smiling at Naruto in a way that was a bit too sweet. She told Naruto, I'd appreciate it if you didn't kill my second. In. Command. It would normally scare the crap out of anyone she went after, but this was Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. He had fought both the Jubi and the Madara and taken their power for himself. Naruto smiled in a way that made all the women, including Mei, blush. Oh, you must be Mei. San. Nice to finally meet you. The blonde person on YouTube, who was blushing from his compliment about her, said, I see you are just as beautiful as all the rumors say. My name is Naruto Namikaze, and I am the Godam Hokage. When Mei calmed down, she said, yes, that would be me. She couldn't help but look at the dead cage. She had to agree that, even though he was younger than her, he probably had the best body she had ever seen. May I ask what you are doing here Hokage? Don't know. Naruto took a serious tone and said, I heard that the Akatsuki were seen near Kiri. I came to make sure they didn't get in the way of the war. He then looked at the spot where he had punched Zabuza. Are you sure you can handle this Hokage? Don't know? From what I heard, they're all S. Rank missing ninjas who travel in pairs, the rebel leader asked, a little worried about the blonde. He had done a lot to help her cause, and in a way, Konoha's help was the only reason they could still fight the war. Naruto smiled and said, of course I can handle two Akatsuki members. Let me show you some of my power. When purple flames hit the ground, the king of hell's shape rose up from them. That's right, Naruto said with a big smile. When the king of hell opened his mouth, there was a loud yell instead of the spray of green lights that was supposed to wake up the rebel forces. Let me out of here, databane. The king of hell shook, but it shut its mouth to try to keep what was inside from coming out. The shaking got very bad in the end, which made the Kiri rebels tense up and get ready for battle. The king of hell finally gave up and let out all of his anger. From his mouth came a pretty woman with red hair who looked very angry. Naruto's eyes got really big when she saw Kashina walk out, but not in her Edo Tensai form. She was fully awake again. Damn it, I forgot that I locked her in there with everything going on. Naruto had a thought. Kashina turned around until she saw the blonde woman with the Hokage hat. She yelled, Minato. Kun. As she ran after the biju and gave it a tight hug. Zabuza couldn't help but laugh when he saw that the blonde was mistaken for his father. Again. He had to fight the urge to hit the Uzumaki woman over the head for calling him that. He really hated it now. Naruto tried to stay calm and said, Kashina. San. Remember that I am not Minato Namikaze. My name is Naruto Namikaze. The redhead told the blonde, Leer, I may have believed that before, but seeing you with the cage hat proves that you are Minato. Kun. Kashina gave him a mean look. Naruto sighed and looked her in the eyes. I am not Minato. Tell me, did the Yandaimi ever have these eyes? When Kashina saw the red, wavy eyes with nine tomo in them, she let out a gasp. She looked at the eyes and thought, they're beautiful, but she was sad that it wasn't Minato. I see, she asked the blonde, so how come I can't feel that snake's presence in my mind or how my body no longer has cracks in it? Naruto chuckled and said, well, when I fought you and Hashirama, I kind of forgot that the king of hell that I used to store whatever it eats and can revive it completely if I give the order. During the fight with Hashirama and after the fight with everything that happened, I kinda slipped out of my mind. He then scratched the back of his head in shame. Not many people know this, but Kashina did not like being ignored. What? How could you forget about me? Kashina yelled, hurt that the blonde had forgotten about her after the battle. Everyone in the Kiri forces was watching, and some of them were about to laugh out loud at the idea that the person who had just killed an army was fighting with the redhead. Naruto stood up and said, I'll make it up to you, I promise. After I take care of what's going on right now, Naruto said, his eyes moving to Mei and Zabuza. Kashina asked Mei where they were and she said Mizu no Kuni. Fine. But after this you're taking me and whoever else I want to come to the most expensive restaurant in. She glared at the blonde and said, in Mizu no Kuni. 
and you pay for everything we eat. Naruto fell to his knees and said, well I did leave you trapped in there for a month, I guess I can do that. He then walked over to Mei. Mei, could you watch Kashina? San while I do what I came here to do. Naruto asked the beautiful woman with auburn hair. That's okay, honestly we thought we were done for when we started this battle. This was about about half of Kiri's remaining army and they outnumbered us 10 to 1. Mei stated with a sigh. She meant to say that they were fine, but she knew that everyone would have been dead by now if the Hokage hadn't come at that time. With a fox. Like grin that made everyone around him sweat, Naruto said, really? I guess I don't know my own strength. Naruto said, oh yeah. I never finished the Rinne Tensai. He was getting ready to use his jutsu again, hoping that it wouldn't get interrupted like the last time. Ghetto. Rinne Tensai. He yelled as he used the King of Hell to bring all the dead rebels back to life. Before he was forced to kneel, Naruto said, there. Are you okay? Mei asked the Hokage as she ran over to him and gave him a soldier pill. Naruto took the pill without any problems and was glad that it didn't taste like what Sakura is used to in his world. After getting up, Naruto said, yeah, damn. I never knew that it took that much out of someone to use that jutsu. He still looked tired from it, though. It took over four tails of chakra, that's why Nagato died when he used it, Naruto thought to himself. Gave them a salute and then disappeared in a blur of speed. A few miles away from Kiri, two men in black cloaks with red clouds on them walked toward the village. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.